pickle. Normally, on our first show back, so yesterday we were at Lone Star Conference Media Days. Mm-hmm. Threw off our Monday groove Threw a little bit. Threw off our Monday bit, groove. But in a good way. So now we're going to do headlines on a Tuesday. But really, in that regard, there's kind of only one headline. And that is, what is going on in college football with relation to one particular program here in the state of Texas, and that is the University of Texas. Um, I should have edited the Elmo gif of him in the fire with like the Big 12 logo. Um, I missed an opportunity. This morning at about 9.30. Yeah. Central time. God's time zone. Um, th- a letter was sent from Jay Hartzell. Mm-hmm. Hartzell? Hartzell? I think it's Hartzell. I'm going to go Hartzell. The president of the University of Texas at Austin and Joseph Harris Jr., the president of the University of Oklahoma. It, it was uh, addressed to Commissioner Greg Sankey. He is the commissioner of the Southeastern Conference, better known as the SEC. Mm-hmm. It reads, <clears throat> Dear Commissioner Sankey, the University of Texas at Austin and the University of Texas of Oklahoma, and then there's some mumbo jumbo, uh, request invitations for membership in the Southeastern Conference starting on July 1st, 2025. We believe that there will be a mutual benefit to the universities on the one hand and the SEC on the other hand for the universities to become members of the SEC. We look forward to the prospect of discussions regarding this matter. Sincerely, the aforementioned presidents. This comes on the heels of yesterday when they, when those two universities, Texas and Oklahoma, told the Big 12 that they would not be renewing their grant of rights whenever the uh, they expire after mm-hmm. the 2025 season. And that was what, in the afternoon? Correct. Three o'clock-ish. Um, or was it, or no, was it, the, I guess it was in it the was morning. At some point. It was know. at some point yesterday. Time, Time has no meaning. meaning. Oh, God. <laughs> um. So, now, now, I, now, grant of rights is like a fancy term, and I, 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 I this can all be very, like, top level and people talking over people. So let me be clear about what grant of rights is. Grant of rights is basically the agreement by which you join the conference in any meaningful way, Mm -hmm. which is that you give the Big 12 or whatever conference your television rights to your contests. Mm -hmm. Okay? So basically, the Big 12 comes together. All those 10 teams agree to agree to, to give their grant of rights to the Big 12. The Big 12 then goes and sells those rights to ESPN. The ESPN gives the money to the Big 12. The mm-hmm. Big 12 disperses those to the 10 member conference. That's what a grant of rights is. The conference is the middleman, and basically. They were, correct. And they were and it's what the kind of the glue that holds everything together there. And so by the by them saying that when they were to expire, I believe on July 1st or, or sometime in, in summer, yeah, July 1st. I believe they would expire June 30th, 30th at 11:59 on, on in 2025. In 2025, they're saying we are not going to be a part of the Big 12 after that date. Correct. They have in- and then obviously this other part where the where the SEC they've gone to the SEC and says, "Hey, by the way, we're going to be a free agent you up." Mm-hmm. Um <laughs> that was that was literally actually what the president's letter yeah, said. It said you not up, to get confused. <laughs> you up. Um, hey boo. <laughs> yes. Um they want to join obviously the SEC. A lot of ramifications, a lot of r- ripple effects here. One thing I will say is people may be getting caught up on the July 1st, 2025 thing. Mm-hmm. Um, true that that's when the buzzer goes off. But there are a number of different scenarios in which the, uh, you know, Texas and Oklahoma, should they be accepted into the big, tw- uh, into the SEC, mm-hmm. um, could join earlier. Basically, you can you can leave whenever you want. Mm-hmm. You're not beholden to them in any way of, of like contractually, except by the fact that you would have to pay to get out. Yes, and it's a and hefty fee. I believe that if they wanted to leave to go to the twenty to to be a member of the SEC in 2022 mm-hmm. next year, it would cost each university somewhere along the lines of eighty million dollars. Now. On one hand, that is a lot of money, and on the other hand, that is not a lot of money. Mm-hmm. But that said, I don't know if necessarily the University of Texas and University of Oklahoma have the stomach to write an $80 million check to leave a conference. Because okay. the other option would be that the Big 12 ceases to exist, mm-hmm. which is a real possibility here because with Texas and Oklahoma leaving the Big 12, they're now down to eight teams. Mm-hmm. That's not viable. No. And so... 
especially when you're talking about brand name awareness and at so this point. In my, and, right. And so in my mind, in my mind, there are a few different possibilities to come here. There's the bi- there's there's what I think is probably the most likely scenario, mm-hmm. which is that the remaining eight teams are going to scatter to ver- to and try to find a different home. Yes, this is where the fact that there is not a geographic like like there's not a real geographic continuity to the conference mm-hmm. really kind of hurts them in the ability to hold together because West Virginia, for example, is probably going to call the ACC. Yes. And say, hey, can we come in? Or the Big Ten, maybe. Mm-hmm. Or any other number of conferences out on the East Coast. Correct. Iowa State, up at the very top of the conference, is probably knocking on the Big Ten's door mm-hmm. and saying, hey, you got any room for us? Which, it's funny, because geographically, that almost makes more sense right. for them to be in the Big Ten anyway. Sure. <laughs> sure. And so, that is option one, which would obviously leave, and we'll get to the other three Texas schools here in a moment, that would obviously leave them in a bit of a lurch as to where they go. Right. We'll get to them. That's option one. Option two would be that the Big 12, the remaining eight teams, hold together, and then they try to bring in other teams. So a Houston, or a Houston, or an (laughs) SMU, or a a Cincinnati, Mm -hmm. or a a Memphis, or teams like that that maybe are looking to get up to that Power 5 level that could join mm-hmm. it. Now, there is a problem with that. Because you're is, ruining the American. <laughs> well, it's not, not 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 even just that. Because, I mean, for the Big 12, they're in, they're in we've got to adapt or die at right. this point. Oh, in, yeah. in many, in, quite literally. They could go and grab those teams and join them. But here's the thing. This is all about TV rights. Mm-hmm. This is all about TV rights. And without Texas and Oklahoma... Plain and simple, they could bring in Cincinnati. They could bring in Houston. They could bring in SMU. They could bring in all these teams. The are they money. going to are yeah. they, are are they going to convince ESPN or Fox or NBC or CBS or somebody to to fork out the money to make it so that it's more viable for these teams mm-hmm. to to stay together? Because let's be honest about this: when the when ESPN signed a deal with the Big Twelve. A lot of it was based on the idea of getting Texas and Oklahoma, mm-hmm. right? When Fox signs a deal with the Big 12, they want to get Texas and Oklahoma. Right, because a Baylor, a TCU, a Tech, they all matter, but the brand awareness they don't, is just they, not the, the brand same. Is and not you're the being same. naive if you want to argue the that brand, fact. Uh, this is not this is this is facts. Uh, like yes. I'm telling you how TV executives think. <laughs> I'm telling you how TV executives think, and I'm telling you how um, how conference commissioners yeah. think. Yeah, sweep, sweep. Think. You're not putting on. Baylor TCU. You're not putting on your, yeah, as much as a game as much as we like it. Yes. It's different. So that's option two is that they try to hold together, there's a calculated risk there, and almost certainly the money would be less there. Mm-hmm. Okay. Option three would be to get a little weird. And to get a little weird would mean, hey, why don't we, the remnants of the Big Twelve, call someone like the Pac twelve mm-hmm. or call someone like the ACC? Because and say, do you want to propose a merger? And I mean a full-on 20-team conference. Mm-hmm. The reason that that I think the Pac-12 may be amenable to that and why the Pac-12 is going to matter a lot in what's going on is that of the Power 5 conferences, of the Power 5 conferences, the Big 12 was always the most vulnerable. Mm-hmm. The Big 12 has long been the most um, wishy most <laughs> most likely to implode. Yes. Most likely to implode. But next on that list is the Pac-12. Mm-hmm. Their TV deal stinks. They've just fired or gotten rid of their their longtime commissioner and mm-hmm. brought in another guy. Uh, They've to, got the to late to be- games too. I mean, just from a TV perspective, sometimes that's, that's part of it. That's hard. That's part you know? of it. They have not done a good job selling it. They tried the Pac-12 network and they can't get on any cable providers. Mm-hmm. It's terrible. And so they are they are vulnerable next. And so if the Big Twelve implodes then the next person up on the firing squad in front of the firing squad is the pac-12 so if the pac-12 wants to be um wants to be proactive Mm -hmm. they could go to the big 12 and say hey why don't we propose a merger Mm -hmm. that would be the biggest thing i think those are probably how i just listed it i think those are probably in order of likelihood 
Mm -hmm. I think the most likely thing is that the teams scatter. The next most likely thing is that they bring in other teams to shore up what's left of the Big 12. Mm -hmm. And the last would be some sort of major merger with, like, the Pac-12 or the ACC. And then it goes to, what, a Power 4 conference? (laughs) Yeah. I mean, who knows? Maybe. who, Who knows how it goes? So there's that. We've talked a lot about Texas. Obviously, they are kind of they have kind of lit the stick of dynamite here. Um, them and Oklahoma mm-hmm. have kind of lit the stick of dynamite on the Big Twelve. There's obviously three other teams in the Big Twelve in, in the Big Twelve in Texas that are now kind of left in a lurch. Yep. One of them is Texas Tech. Mm-hmm. Now, if you remember back years ago, Texas Tech was rumored to be connected to the Pac-12. Mm-hmm. This was in the last line of last round of realignment. They were rumored to be connected to the Pac-12, but a large part of that, in my opinion, I don't know the inside uh, conversations with this, but a large part of that was that Texas and Oklahoma were coming along with them, or at the very least, Texas yep. was coming along with them. Does the Pac-12 have interest in a standalone Texas Tech product? Mm-hmm. There's some value in the mm-hmm. sense that you get into the Texas market, although I think that the value of markets are probably diminishing, but mm-hmm. there's some value there. Um, geographically, it makes the most sense. And style of play, too, with a more high-flying sure. rather than you know run-heavy. S- stylistically, they, you could say that they are a, a fit for the Pac-12. I think, Pac- I think they may be, of the three teams, may be in the best position to mm-hmm. land on their feet. The next team that I think is in a position to land on their feet would be TCU. Yes. Now, they're an interesting case. Remember, they have not been in the the Big 12 long. Mm -mm. They were, whenever A&M and and Missouri and Nebraska and Colorado bolted, Mm -hmm. they were added along with West Virginia uh, uh, to shore up the Big 12 to make it what it is right now and to hold it together. With the 10 teams. Correct. TCU is a a private school. TCU is a smaller school. Than, than all the teams mm-hmm. that we've listed so far. But they are they have one big club in their bag, and that is they're in a major metro area. Mm-hmm. They're in DFW. And and there's a good alumni base, and and there's going to be some value, I think, to other conferences, mm-hmm. maybe the Pac-12, someone like that, um, to come and, and come knocking on TCU's door. I think that they are probably second best to land on their feet. Yes. There's that. There's one more, and it's Baylor. Now, I'm not going to go into the whole history of Baylor being in the uh, Big 12. Uh, there, You can read all about it, about the the way that they got into the Big 12 when the Southwest Conference disbanded. Mm-hmm. Um, if I'm Baylor, I'm worried. I'm real worried. Where do you go? Because <laughs> they are a small-ish yeah. private school not in a major metro area Mm-mm. and they don't bring anything from a realignment perspective to mm-hmm. be clear i like our friends at baylor they don't bring anything from a realignment perspective that tech or tcu don't bring mm-hmm. um, they're cu- they're they're in third place out of in, three there out of the three in my opinion i think they're in third place and that's that's a problem mm-hmm. that's a problem because I think I think if you're Baylor, what you're trying to do is you are trying like hell to hold this thing together. Mm-hmm. You're trying like hell. Your best option is to hold the Big Twelve together and bring in teams even at a lower lower buy yes. you know lower uh, the, TV deal. Yeah, the Houston something the like that. You bring those. You are trying like hell to do that. So what you're going to do is now that the conference is kind of breaking up, or we think it it is at least there are parts of it that are breaking up. You have teams that are going to be acting in their own interest, Mm -hmm. right? It used to be we're all working together for the Big 12. Now, Tech is going to be like, if I can get a deal with, the, if I can get a spot in the Pac-12, I'm just going. Yep. It's it's musical chairs at this mm-hmm. point. I, I you can even throw it, and this isn't in our geographic region, but Oklahoma State, I feel like, is very much in I the think, same similarity. I think Oklahoma of, State's in trouble. What do you do? Like Kansas, the Kansas and Kansas State. That's a that's a package deal, almost in my opinion. Hoops also helps with that, but Baylor I think and, Oklahoma, and Oklahoma State. I think Oklahoma State. I think Kansas State. 
I think yeah. Kansas State's in trouble because for for Kansas, like for example, they've got basketball. They've got a little bit of basketball, and they've got like the big basketball brand. I know what you're probably saying. You're probably saying, "Wait, Baylor just won the men's national championship," and that is true. They are not the but same. But it's brand. not the long established not brand. The same brand. Yeah. I hate to say that, but it's true. And by the way, we're also talking. I mean, realistically, let's be real about what we're talking about. We're talking about football. Mm-hmm. Football is what drives conference realignments. Absolutely. So look, it's it's going to be dicey. So here's what to watch next. Okay. Here's what to watch next. And we'll get into the ramifications of what Texas at the SEC would look like, et cetera. We have plenty of time for that because it's not <laughs> happening this year. We've got a whole offseason next year. Mm-hmm. Um, what to watch next is to watch what the Pac-12 does. Yes. I think their, th- theirs is the next move to make. Theirs is the next move to make um, and see what happens there. Um, if they start knocking on the door of Texas Tech, if they start knocking on the door of TCU um, – then you could really see some things happen quickly. Mm -hmm. Um, Also, I would not be surprised if you start hearing rumblings about the Big 12 asking Houston and SMU and Tulsa and Memphis and Mm -hmm. some of those major AAC programs, Tulane, if they want to come aboard the Big 12 train. Um, Because realistically, they got to start shooting their shot now. (laughs) Right. I also, you know, I'll also just say that I don't know if this is getting to 2025. I think that especially if you're going to have if you're going to have all these teams that are breaking up then they may just say well why are we even together then and especially if if especially if there's another move where for example if tech and if Iowa State were to go to the Big 10 and then you're left with 7 or you know something like that I would wonder if then you would start negotiating some sort of deal where they break up after 2022 or 2023 and get out of this so that nobody has to pay and just agree to all walk away. Do you know the answer to this? If there is one giant agreement of the conference is just going to dissipate at the end of the 2022 season or something mm-hmm. like that, no one has to pay. No, do they? at that point, at, at that, that point, point, who would you pay? Everyone. So it's almost right. better at that if the point. The bank goes out of business, business then you don't yeah. owe the bank. Okay. I want to make sure. Why we drive the banks out of business? Yeah, exactly. When you control the mail, you control the information. That's exactly right. <laughs> um, anyway, I hope that's a fifty thousand foot view uh, of things. There's, there's obviously people who know this a lot deeper and are are, are getting in, in into the weeds of you know they're sourced within these programs and stuff mm-hmm. like that. I am not that guy. Shahan Jairaj is a lot closer to that guy. Oh yeah. So we should probably have him on at some point to talk about the ramifications. But it's happening. Guys. We can show you the table. It's <laughs> happening. And by the way, I know that there. Like one other thing about this is that there's, and we talked about this last week with Shahan. Um, that are the SEC is the SEC going to let them in? All reports right now are that the vote would be something along the lines of thirteen to one. Yeah. That everyone, with the exception of A and M. Is going, what is going to vote to extend membership because mm-hmm. in the end guys it's about that dollar it's about money that talks. money and and every sec school would stand to to gain more money mm-hmm. um by letting these two programs in that's why half of them are in the sec to start off with yeah. <laughs> right. so there you go that's where we're at big 12's on fire and we'll see what happens from here keep an eye on the pac-12 keep an eye on what the, uh, on if you start hearing rumblings out of houston and smu that's why that's where we're at Thanks so much for watching that video. If you would like more and to be notified when they come out, go ahead and click that subscribe button right down there. You can also watch Texas Football Today every day live at noon on TexasFootball.com, Facebook, Twitch, and right here on YouTube. For more of the best coverage of Texas football in the Lone Star State, go to TexasFootball.com slash subscribe.